looming on the horizon, an American aircraft carrier inspires awe. But magnificence alone cannot guarantee safety at sea. Lurking beneath the waves or high in the skies, invisible threats like submarines, stealth aircraft, anti-ship missiles, and sea mines forever stalk these naval giants. The maritime domain conceals danger. So how do U.S. aircraft carriers and their escort ships negate these unseen perils? The answer lies in a blend of strategy, sensors, platforms, and above all else, networking. Together, these form a multi-layered defense, giving carriers foresight their enemies can only dream of. Join us as we uncover the truth about how U.S. aircraft carriers neutralize unseen threats with precision. Why are these threats so dangerous to an aircraft carrier? Simply put, their combination of stealth, range, and firepower. For example, modern diesel electric submarines run ultra quiet, propellers carefully designed to dampen cavitation, that telltale bubbling, advanced sound damping systems absorbing noises within the hull. Some can even sit silent on the seafloor, making only twice daily trips to periscope depth to recharge batteries. These subsurface assassins carry a lethal mix of torpedoes and cruise missiles. Russian and Chinese attack subs, in particular, Field SSN-27, Sizzler, and SSN-22, Sunburn, anti-ship missiles. Flying at Mach 2.5 or faster, with a range exceeding 300 km, they streak towards targets at sea level, ducking under radar coverage. There is a good reason why the Pentagon's 2018 Nuclear Posture Review singled out Russian undersea capabilities as part of Moscow's overall military capabilities. Then there are land-based anti-ship missiles, which can have even greater reach. For example, China's DF-21D and DF-26 carrier killer missiles boast a range of 1,500 to 5,000. Warheads up to 500 kiloton can inflict catastrophic damage to any vessel through sheer explosive power alone. The DF-26 in particular orbits targets in space before re-entering the atmosphere and racing toward its selected point of impact. Even more disturbing is the scourge of sea mines. The explosive potential of just one mine detonating against a carrier's hull makes them a serious menace. They may be primitive in concept, but modern sea mines are advanced in their methods of concealment and targeting. Some bury themselves under layers of silt or sand, where they can lie dormant for decades. Newer models actually probe the magnetic or acoustic signature of a vessel before attacking a specific section of the hull. Clearing these aquatic IEDs requires painstaking effort. Against this spectrum of traditional kinetic threats and emerging cyber art electronic warfare dangers, carriers rely on early warning to survive. Modern sensor systems first and foremost. The ANSPI-6 radar equips U.S. surface combatants with phenomenal situational awareness, able to simultaneously track thousands of air and surface contacts at extended ranges, even in intense clutter environments like nearshore operations. But in the networked battle space, sensors are only as strong as the system connecting them. Here, satellites, data links, and communications form the digital nervous system that binds platforms across vast oceanic battle spaces into coordinated action. For the Navy, this system collectively falls under the purview of Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter Air, NAFCCA. An amalgamation of networked platforms, it provides carriers with an expanding sensor coverage and ability to project power. Warships, aircrafts, submarines, all nodes feeding targeting data into the overall picture. And this web continues to widen. New assets like the MQ-4 Triton Broad Area Maritime Surveillance Drone will further boost radar detection into areas previously unreachable. Even stealthier platforms are joining the fray, like DARPA's ACTUV Unmanned Subhunter and the Sea Hunter Anti-Submarine Robotic Trimaran. Augmenting manned vessels with autonomous systems enhances coverage and reduces risk. Beyond seeing threats, however, escorts must also destroy them. Hence, carriers sail with a screen of surface combatants, submarines, and aircraft conducting outer to inner defensive patrols in the water and skies around them. For threats at extended ranges, missile-toting cruisers and destroyers form the first shield. Using SM-2R6 interceptors and NIFC-CA-enabled cooperative targeting to swat incoming missiles and aircraft from distances exceeding 500 km. Should any leak through, carriers have their own last-ditch defenses like the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow, RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile, and 20mm by 67mm Phalanx Cannons to handle point defense. 
Undersea, fast attack submarines scout ahead, tracking potentially hostile vessels using sophisticated passive and active sonars. If an enemy submarine is detected, they can engage it directly with MK-48 heavyweight torpedoes. As premium ASW platforms, their role is critical given the resurgence of extremely quiet air, independent, diesel electric submarine technologies fielded by Russia, China, and others. Finally, to eliminate threats before they launch, carrier air wings provide outer defense by conducting combat air patrols hundreds of miles out. F-35Cs will be critical in this outer layer mission thanks to their stealth and powerful onboard sensors, providing superior detection range against low radar cross-section threats like cruise missiles flying sea-skimming profiles. Once detected, air wing fighters and their air to air weapons can pick them off from beyond visual range. Yet in this interwoven battle network, perhaps the most crucial aspect is cooperation between surface ships, aircraft, and submarines. Each controls a domain, air, surface, and subsurface. But only by working together can they sharpen the sensor picture and provide mutual security. For example, Aircraft vastly boost surface ship radar detection using networked data links. Fighters passively detect threats with their sensitive ESM ELINT gear, shooting target location data to warships over distances far exceeding their own sensor range. The data received is integrated into the combat system plot, alerting ships to shadows in the battlefield otherwise invisible to their organic radar systems. The favor is returned underwater by submarines, their superior acoustics in the noisy littoral environment help surface ships track and engage quiet diesel-electric submarines, but they face their own limitations, operating solely underwater. Hence, sailors use floating communications antennas to maintain connectivity with command networks when remaining to deep risks detection. This keeps them securely wired into the Joint Reconnaissance Information Grid. In this maritime ballet between subsurface, surface, and air platforms, organic UAVs like the MQ-8 Fire Scout drone now join in the dance, expanding sensor reach for their host vessels, streaming real-time ISR direct from the source without reliance on off-hull communications prone to jamming, and launching precision-guided munitions to handle threats independently. Yet despite the Navy's strides in protective systems, the future remains fraught with uncertainty. A new generation of hypervelocity missile prototypes focuses on pulling off radical final second course corrections to evade terminal defenses. Russian Zircon hypersonic weapons in particular promise sustained speeds above 6,000 miles per hour. China, meanwhile, leads in field and ground, based intermediate range ballistic missile interceptors, an expertise they can leverage to neutralize shipborne ABM systems by overwhelming them through saturation attacks. Then there is the ascendance of electromagnetic railgun technology, which the Navy temporarily mothballed for further development until power supply and barrel wear issues are resolved. Using kinetic energy alone, these Mach 7 hypersonic rounds could threaten carriers at ranges exceeding 200 nautical miles, and many times further when fired from land batteries. Yet the most destabilizing specter comes from AI-enabled autonomous drone swarms. Coordinating sophisticated cooperative tactics between themselves, these distributed weapon systems frustrate traditional defenses via saturation and defense paralysis effects. Even small suicide drones pose big risks. Just look at recent strikes during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. The carrier's last bastion of defense, layered kinetic interceptors, face an uncertain future against drone swarming tactics, or AI. Enabled counter-countermeasure evasion algorithms designed to specifically target protective systems and process weaknesses. These disruptive munitions technologies will reshape naval warfare in the coming decades, but they aren't insurmountable threats if met with appropriate foresight by preemptively disrupting destroying launch platforms before weapons release through deep offensive strike, the Navy can mitigate some hazard. Directed energy weapons like solid-state lasers can also counter optronics-dependent platforms as well as incoming munitions during their terminal homing phase. And emerging electronic cyber warfare and A2AD denial technologies will further check over-reliance on brute explosive force alone to guarantee maritime dominance. For now though, carriers still rule the waves, and their superlative air power allows the Navy's floating airbases to deliver lethal combat striking power or humanitarian aid with equal ability. Storm, hurricane, or tsunami, one thing remains certain. 
Wherever calamity strikes across the open ocean, an aircraft carrier is often first on scene, bringing aid and hope. Sentinels of the Sea Preserving Liberty This is the United States Navy. The ocean's dangers do not sleep. Threats swarm beneath the waves, preparing to strike from hidden depths. Aircraft carriers must remain vigilant, spearheading the naval defensive lines to ensure seas remain open for all. Yet, even as weapons technologies advance, the human element perseveres. Training, leadership, ingenuity, all determine who prevails. Sailors standing watch deep within these steel behemoths know however advanced the technology, wars are still won by those with courage, camaraderie, and commitment to their country. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content on naval warfare, be sure to let us know by hitting like and subscribe. Also, tap the bell icon to get notifications whenever we release new videos. Please share your thoughts in the comments section on what kind of naval threats you think will pose the biggest danger in future wars. And as always, thanks for watching and for your support. See you on the next one.